Good morning, folks. We have taken a hiatus from the larger quakes. Rumbles up and down the Atlantic ruled the day seismically, the largest up north. We also have the third straight day of minor buoy deviations in the Indian Ocean, building now. The top story today is making its rounds online, coming as a shock to 99.99% .99 of the people who are not suspicious observers. This is right in line with one of the ultimate conclusions of Starwater that there are at least 500 billion watery worlds to explore in our galaxy alone. This was based on our past underestimation of planetary and lunar water content, where it comes from, how it gets there, and just how many of these planets there are, and may now actually need to revise that number a bit higher. We go to the poles, Arctic sea ice on the left, well below average yet again, continuing, but the Antarctic sea ice on the right, breaking high ice records with regularity. Although the tropical storms are in the west and southwest Pacific, the most influential system is the stuck low east of New Zealand. Just a bit of rain remaining in northern Australia as well. In Europe, we see a low cell that is not well constructed, but nevertheless reinforced by a high pressure cell to the south. The wind power created there will begin to affect the continent today. The wind warnings are out, and I'd love some weather shares. The surface drive is not too strong in the United States. When we come in for NOAA's official U.S. forecast map today, a couple spots where locals are fully capable of handling the freezing rain and snow, and that's not to say they can't handle it down at the Gulf, but let's be honest, my friends down there, how was the driving earlier this year with the snow and ice? Surface drive may be weak, but it's sustained at the east coast straight south to the area, causing those extremely cold temperatures for the zone. Interesting expert disagreement on NASA's ISWA. We have two different positions marked as being Earth's magnetic connection to the star. It's likely spread a bit between them. We did not have any major solar flares yesterday. We may be ready for an uptick any day, but the long-term march towards another grand minimum won the last 24 hours. The Earth-facing sunspots are the top analytical priority. You remember the northern aspect was the beast when it was at the limb, popping that X flare, but the negative half of that delta decayed, favoring the magnetic mixing at the backside of the southern trailer. Has been quiet, despite its genuine potential for larger flares. You can see that she wants to clear her throat with minor ejecta there. Also please note the thin dark plasma filaments as they present an equal eruption threat to the delta spots. 24 hours of solar wind telemetry shows calming density and speed. A recipe for geomagnetic calm at Earth and the KP index shows that quiet space weather level. Next coronal holes get a proper welcome today when those blue coronal fields get the heck out of the way. Streams will be set. Geoeffective magnetism already in play. Dark and incoming. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.